So uh, first, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me a chance to deliver a talk in the QCRIP. This is the first time for me to attend the QCRIP. So I'd like to talk about the fundamental rate loss trade-off for optical quantum key distribution. This is a work, uh, I, I am Masahiro Takeoka from NICT, and this is a work with Saikat Guha and uh, Mark Wilde. So uh, this is the uh, motivation of our work. So, uh, as you know, QKD can generate a very s secure key. Uh, that, that's the uh, motivation for, uh, I guess, all of us coming to this conference. And uh, so far, there are various QKD protocols have been invented. And then one particular feature is that all of the protocols, uh, the key rate decreases linearly with respect to the channel loss. Uh, this is an example uh, borrowed from some review of modern oh, physics uh, paper. Uh, where here uh, various protocols are plot with uh, some experimental parameters uh, with respect to the key rate and the channel loss. And all of the protocols going down linearly with respect to the channel loss. So uh, uh, in this talk, I'd like to ask the question if, if this uh, trade-off is a fundamental limit or we can overcome this. So uh, to think about this, let, let me give a little bit more uh, ex uh, examples. Uh, now just forget about the, any technical noises or imperfections. Then it, for example, for the BB84 protocol, if we have a perfect single photons, perfect detectors, and no alignment, uh, misalignments, then, uh, so no cube bursts, then we get uh, this very simple <coughs> uh, key rate with respect to the eta. Eta is the channel transmitter, so it's a loss. Then uh, this factor two is uh, in BB84 qubit is encoded in uh, two modes, uh, polarization or time beam or something. Then uh, the key rate is uh, obviously decreases uh, linearly with respect to the, uh, the channel loss. So we, we get this line. Uh, so the question is if we can go better than this uh, or not. Another uh, example is maybe the CV, so-called CVQKD. I don't describe the details of the calculation, but if we assume uh, no excess noise, uh, perfect devices, etc., then we get uh, this pink line, which is very close to the uh, BB84, and again, uh, it has a linear trade-off between uh, loss and uh, key rate. And in fact, at the theoretical level, uh, it is known that there is a better protocol, which is called a reverse coherent information. Uh, I, I don't have a time to talk about this in detail, but uh, these authors showed that if we, uh, Alice and Bob can have a strong two-mode squeeze vacuum and uh, if they can do any collective quantum operations on here and here, then they can get uh, the rate which is described by this simple function of eta. And uh, <coughs> so this again, again uh, linearly decreases. And as far as we know, this is the best achievable rate, even at the theoretical level. So our, our question is, is there any fundamental limit on this rate? Or, or, or uh, in other words, are there any yet to be discovered uh, optical QKD products that can circumvent this linear uh, rate loss trade-off? So this is uh, our question. And uh, uh, first, I'd like to show our result. The message of this uh, talk is that uh, it is, um, uh, that is not possible. We can, we can show that uh, <coughs> by proving uh, uh, the secret key agreement capacity of a lossy optical channel assisted by classical communication is upper bounded by this uh, simple function given in here. And uh, this, uh, this function is uh, uh, very close to the blue one. And uh, so uh, you can compare these two functions uh, very close. So this is uh, the main result, and the uh, rest of the talk, I, I'd like to sh show how we can come up with this uh, conclusion. So to consider this kind of upper bound, we have to consider the most general point-to-point uh, -point QKD protocols. Uh, anyway, I, uh, in this talk, I, I, I don't think about any quantum repeaters or trusted relays or this kind of thing. I consider only the point-to-point -point simple QKD protocol. Then, uh, so I, I'll first show the general protocol, how it is described, and then uh, I'll sh introduce some quantity which we call squashed entanglement of a channel, and actually it's a bound for this key rate. Then apply this general theorem into the pure loss optical channel, and finally I'd like to talk a little bit about a loss and noise channel. So, uh, so uh, the most general Q kind of QKD protocol can be described in, in this kind of uh, figure. 
Here, Alice is allowed to use any arbitrary quantum state that she wants, and then she can use uh, n quantum channels, and uh, Alice and Bob are allowed to allow the unlimited two-way classical communication, uh, and then they want to distill the secret keys. So le let me show a little bit uh, more in time ordering. First, I Alice prepares some big state which may be entangled over n channel uses or n pulses. Then uh, she starts to send only a part of the system through a noisy channel n to Bob. And, and as in the usual QKD scenario, if can attack on this channel passively or actively uh, under the condition that she, she cannot uh, change the property of the channel. Then uh, after sending the system, uh, they can do the two-way classical communications, which can be fully collected by if. And then Alice send the next uh, part of the system through a quantum channel. And again, do the classical communication and uh, repeat this process. And in the end, uh, the after the final classical communication, they can get a k secret keys. The rate of the key generation is uh, defined by k over n, and uh, the maximum of this in all possible protocol is the capacity of this, this problem. So uh, this is uh, our first result. We, we can show that this rate is always upper bounded by the quantity which we call a uh, squashed entanglement of a quantum channel. And this is uh, actually the, the function of the squashed entanglement of a quantum state, uh, which is introduced by Kristandl and Winter. And uh, now I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, what these quantities are. Uh, first, uh, the squashed entanglement is uh, <coughs> defined by a, a function of the quantum conditional mutual information between Alice and Bob. And uh, this is, and uh, take all the infimum of uh, this with respect to the operation S. What is uh, operation S? So uh, in the beginning, uh, Alice and Bob share some bipartite state, rho AB, and we can always purify this system to phi ABE. And then uh, if hold the, the environment. Then if applies uh, some quantum operation S, which we call squash operation, then get uh, some E prime. This operation is uh, chosen such that it minimizes the condition conditional mutual information. So it minimizes the correlation between Alice and Bob. So it's somehow squashing the correlation between them. So it's called a squashing uh, channel. And uh, these authors showed that uh, this works as a very nice entangled measure, full of being nice properties. And interestingly, uh, they are inspired by some classical information, or security information theory. So now using this uh, squash entanglement of a state, we, we define the squash entanglement of a channel in, in shown in here. So it's a, a function of the ESQ of AB of rho. Here rho is a bipartite state which is, consists of this uh, channel and the initial input state. So Alice prepares some initial in input state and send a part of that through to Bob through a channel. Then, then uh, rho AB uh, is obtained. Then uh, this function is maximized over any possible input state. So this is the definition. And then by using this definition, we can prove this uh, bound. <coughs> So I, I don't have uh, time to, to describe the proof in detail, but uh, the proof consists of uh, two main ingredients. One is the, some the previous theorem of the secret key distillation upper bound given by Chris Tunnell and the many co-authors. And we, we can borrow some techniques from, from this paper, but uh, that is not uh, fully enough. And we, ha we had to introduce uh, some kind of new sub-additivity inequality for the squash entanglement. So here, I'd like to talk a little bit uh, why we, we need uh, this uh, extra ingredient. To explain this, uh, let me show some result of, of this uh, Cristanel et al. paper. This is a big, big paper, uh, but uh, only a part of the result I, I put in here. It says that uh, squash entanglement is an upper bound on the distillable key rate from a tensor product state rho AB tensor N. And uh, it, it has some longer proof, but uh, in the proof, important thing is that the proof is that the proof uses the following four properties of the squash entanglement. One is the monotonicity and the, the local operation and the public communication. 
and a continuity, which is necessary to, to give the trace distance based uh, security criteria. And the normalization and the sub additivity on tensor product uh, input state, uh, tensor product states, row, row to the n. So now uh, we, we want to, so uh, since the squash entanglement of the channel is a function of the squash entanglement, we can use uh, this uh, technique and uh, these nice properties of, the, of this function, except the, the last line. Uh, <laughs> so what's the problem? Uh, uh, now we, we want to replace this uh, subadditivity with something like uh, the subadditivity of the squash entanglement of a channel. So the question is if we can easily derive this from this. Maybe that is not straightforward because uh, here uh, the state is uh, restricted to the product state, but uh, we, in our setting we, we, we assume that Alice can uh, prepare any kind of state which can be entangled over channels. So uh, how, how we can show this? To, to show this, maybe we need something like this inequality for a squash entanglement. Then we can show this. So uh, this is the uh, inequality for the kind of tripartite state, which is cut in this line or, or in, in these two, uh, two parts. So it, and we want to have the inequality in this direction. Is, is, it, is it possible? I, it's not possible because uh, <coughs> there's a mono monogamy of entanglement established by Kwashi and Winter, which exactly says the, the opposite direction of the inequality. So unfortunately, we can't use this. So what, what we can do, uh, in fact, uh, we can circumvent the problem by slightly modifying the, the setting by uh, adding extra system E1 and E2. Then for, for any five-party pure state, we can show the inequality uh, given in here. <coughs> the, the proof uh, is, is a chain of the inequalities, but which uses uh, some basic tools in quantum information theory, like duality of conditional entropy or strong subadditivity and so on. So how, how we can get this uh, subadditivity from the new inequality? This is uh, somehow easy. So remember that the squashed entanglement of a channel is a function of the squashed entanglement. So this is equal to this with some particular optimal state. Uh, this it here, this is the squashed entanglement of a whole, whole system of two channel uses. Now apply the, this new inequality, we, we have two terms. Uh, one is that uh, the interpretation of these terms is that here, uh, one channel use is sent to Bob, but the other channel output is kept by uh, Alice, uh, so Alice send uh, the system to the channel, but kept keep the all output states. And uh, the second term, the first channel use is kept by Alice. So uh, then uh, once we get this, we can immediately say that this is uh, uh, the squash entanglement channel times two is uh, greater than this, because uh, uh, according to this definition, after optimizing this uh, initial state in here, we, we, we get this. <coughs> so uh, applying this uh, new relation, we, we can replace the, the fourth condition of these four conditions. Then after some calculations, we can, get, uh, we can show that uh, the key rate is always upper bounded by ESQ of n plus some uh, small term f of epsilon, which, which is a term uh, goes to zero when n goes to large, enough large. So for, for the details of this uh, proof, uh, please look at this paper. And now uh, we, we want to apply this uh, general squash entanglement of a channel into the pure loss optical channel, specific channel. So to calculate it, we have to find uh, some squashing uh, channel for IB. Unfortunately, we don't have any systematic way to, to get the optimal squashing channel, but uh, so we have to try in a heuristic way, but luckily we can get a relatively easy squashing, easy squashing channel which can get a, get a better bound. It is actually the, again, the pure loss, it is actually the, just a pure loss squashing channel and setting this beam splitting parameter to the half, then Okay. Uh, then uh, the within this setting, uh, conditional mutual information is um, minimized. 
and then uh, we have uh, this kind of expression for the, the upper bound and after uh, and where ns is the main input power of the, the input state, initial state by Alice and taking this n to infinity we get uh, this simple bound. So we, we, get, we can get this graph. So finally let me briefly uh, talk about the lossy and noisy channel which is maybe more practical. Now the situation is uh, here. Uh, the channel has a loss and then from the other part of the beam split uh, uh, there's an injection of the thermal noise. And <coughs> so now the situation is more complicated. Uh, it can do any active attack or so something weird. So it's not easy to find a good uh, squashing channel. But uh, we can give some, some bound by the following technique. Uh, this channel is always decomposed into the, the pure loss channel followed by some amplifier. Then uh, the simple data processing argument says that uh, the total squash entanglement of a channel is always smaller than uh, the squash entanglement of a channel for uh, only a pure loss part because uh, more data processing only decreases the quantity or, or can only decrease the quantity. So uh, then <coughs> we can uh, get some new up upper bound for the thermal noise loss channel and uh, this figure compares this upper bound and the lower bound obtained by the reverse coherent information. And uh, NB is uh, the, the photon number of the thermal noise and unfortunately if we have finite noises, uh, anyway, uh, solid lines are the upper bound and the dotted lines are the lower bound and if we have finite noises, unfortunately there's a huge gap between this lower bound and the upper bound. So uh, this is a summary, so the main result of our this talk is that uh, the secret key rate of any repeat LSQKD protocols in a lossy optical channel is bounded by this uh, simple function. So if we want to go beyond this, we need something else. For example, quantum repeaters, <coughs> trusted relays, or, or uh, make the restriction on it, or something else. And uh, this uh, bound is based on the more general theory of the squashed entanglement of a quantum channel. This is more general uh, in, in the sense that we can apply it for any, any kind of channel, not only the optical channel. And also I'd like to say that uh, this, this also gives an upper bound for the quantum capacity uh, assisted by two-way classical communications. So maybe we have more applications of this. So uh, there are many interesting open problems. Uh, personally, the most interesting thing is that uh, I want to find the true, exact two-way assisted secret key capacity. In particular, in optical channel, lossy channel, that is in between these blue and red lines. Uh, uh, but we don't know ex exactly where it is. And uh, of course, we want to find a more tight uh, upper bound for a noisy channel. And finally, I have to mention a little bit about a finite block code analysis. Because uh, in, in this talk, uh, I, I, we only consider the asymptotic limit of the large, large n. And in fact, uh, this upper bound is uh, called the so-called weak converse, which only says that uh, you cannot get a perfect, perfectly secure uh, communication. I mean, uh, epsilon goes to z exactly zero, even in the, in the asymptotic limit of large uh, block length. And uh, for finite block lengths, uh, even with the weak converse, we can say something about uh, the, the bound. But uh, if we want to have a more sharper bound, we may need uh, some, something more sophisticated theory like strong converse or the second or third order analysis that was uh, discussed in the previous session. So that's all. Thank you for your time. <laughs> this is for pure loss. And do you have any comment in case of noise? Yes, uh, this this bound is only for for a linear only for a linear loss, and uh, noise noise. Uh, yeah, we have some bound for noise, but which it is not so tight, <laughs> and there's a gap between the lower bound and the upper bound, and uh, if if we can come up with a better squashing channel idea, maybe we could improve uh, this this bound. Uh, there is another, you use squash entanglement, there is another uh, upper bound on key, which is relative entropy of entanglement, um, which also may not, or may satisfy this last point which you, was, uh, which you proved. 
about uh, subjectivity. Did you try this way, or do you have some impression on that? Uh, uh, Can that's it be a, used? That's an interesting question, but we, we have never, we have never tried that. Oh, thanks. But that's a good point. 